Hello, you're watching a lesson on controlling access to vCloud. In this lesson, we're going to be focusing specifically on vCloud Director, and that's so that we can control access to who can get into vCloud and what organizations, specifying what roles they have, and tying into LDAP. This is also that we can make as seamless of an experience for the user, as well as controlling specifically what they can and cannot do. To begin with, let's talk about the root system administration first. This is the system tab that you see when you log into vCloud Director, and it's really the overarching control of the entire vCloud. Now within the system area, there's only one role. There's the boss of the system, Mr. Systems Admin, him or herself. There's really no reason to have any other roles because if you're in the vCloud Director system console, or web interface, I should say, all you're really there to do is administer the vCloud environment. You're not building anything for consumption within the cloud, really. You're not you know, a consumer of the cloud. You're the architect, engineer, admin, whatever you want to call it, of the cloud. So this systems administrator account has the highest level of authority within vCloud, has full rights to everything. I actually took a, a picture of the rights uh, on the right side, and as you can see, all rights is checked, everything is checked, it's all grayed out because it just you can't even be modified. This this is what a systems admin does, and the system doesn't want you to accidentally uncheck a box because if the you know global most powerful account can't do it, what else could? You basically would be in a world of pain. Uh, and also, uh, you can import. Uh, from vSphere SSO or LDAP uh, accounts into the system administrator role. So you can tie other entities into this role, but there is only one role at the system level. I will say be very, very careful who has this role assigned to them because they basically can do anything they want within the environment. There's really no limits at all. Uh, they have uh, full, in the world of Windows, this would be like being a forest or enterprise admin. Um, and what I like to do, what I caution with the red flag is be careful who you assign this role to. And I specifically go for users. So the problem I have with giving this account to a group is that then someone could potentially go into Active Directory and put more users into this group, not really knowing what it is. Um, even if you put a ton of warnings around it, it may be, you know, super awesome admin role, do not give to anyone group. And they'll be like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll add uh, this new guy that started in the finance group in there. And it's like, whoa, that's not what I wanted. So if you just actually add user accounts to this role directly in vCloud, then you know as a vCloud admin exactly who has the role. You can go into vCloud, you can look at the list of users with sysadmin role, and you know without a doubt exactly who has it. Outside of really, really large organizations, you know, you can you can most likely get away with that because typically we're talking at most 10 people who might need this role. Uh, so managing 10 people that have it is not the end of the world. Now, I did cover this a little bit in another lesson, but we're going to go really deep into the roles that exist outside of the system environment. So within the organizations, there's five roles that you can assign to users. You'll notice there is actually no systems admin role outside of the system environment. Once you get into organizations, you now have five roles specifically for organizations. And from kind of highest amount of permissions to lowest amount of permissions, the top one is the organization administrator. Now again, I, I put a red flag to caution you, this is almost similar to a systems admin. It's almost equal in that the organization administrator has full and unfettered power over the organization. This should be limited to someone who really needs that kind of power uh, because they can not only remove vApps and create new vApps and add and remove users, but you know they can also delete existing workloads that are in there. So you want to be very careful who has this type of access. Don't give it to just your standard user because it's easier because they will end up shooting themselves in the foot. Now then you've got uh, four roles that are a bit less um, hostile, I guess, a little less volatile, because they are focused around vApps. The organization admin can do a lot of permissions type things, policies, 
uh, change LDAP, change email, that kind of stuff. The other four roles don't really have access to the administrator options. And that's the first one is catalog author. So the catalog author is the person that's going to kind of prune and maintain and add and remove from your catalog. Now the catalog within an organization is basically how you present vApps as choices to the consumers of your cloud. So they go to the catalog, they pick what they want, they deploy a vApp from the catalog and they go along their merry way. So the catalog author is the person that is importing and removing, editing, maybe they're powering on uh, an item in the catalog to update it. Uh, in which they actually copy a vApp out, update it, and then you know update the vApp within the template. So there's a lot of things they can do, and you know this is not nearly as as I guess volatile as an organization admin is, but they still have a lot of control uh, of over the fact that the catalog is really the heart of vCloud. Without items in the catalog, vCloud really doesn't do anything. So you want to be a little careful who has this role as well. Then vApp author. So a vApp author is someone that can reach into the catalog, find an item within the catalog that they want to use, and then they can deploy a vApp from that catalog entry. So they're going to be the person that's really uh, creating the vApps from the catalog, and they're kind of the consumers of the cloud, so to speak. They have a bit more authority because they can also go in there and, and tweak the vApp that ultimately gets deployed, but they can't mess with the catalog. The vApp user is a person, is a true consumer. They take the vApps that have been deployed by the author and they use them. So they can power it on and power it off, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, they can go into the console. They're just there to consume that vApp and make sure that it's running and doing what it needs to do. And then the lowest level user account is, or user role, is the console access only. It's a very, it's a very obvious name. <laughs> it's someone that can go into the console of the virtual machine uh, using the VMRC, the VM Remote Console, and, and that's all we're talking about. It's not RDP access or anything else like that. We're just talking about console access from vCloud Director. So those are the five different roles that exist at the organization level. Some tips for using roles include something I think is very common within IT, and that's the idea of starting with the least permissive role. And that's if you don't know what role to give someone, find the one that you think might not quite make it, might be a little bit less than what they need, such as maybe they need uh, console access and the ability to just restart the virtual app or the vApp. And that's where you're going to start with maybe console access only and give them a specific permission just above that, which may be just restart the vApp. So you wouldn't give them vApp user because that might have more than what they need. You take the least permissive role, which would be console access, and give them specifically a new role that has console access plus restart the vApp. And that's an example where you'd want to be very granular with the type of roles that you use because that ultimately fulfills the specific needs that you have. And you're not just giving them extra stuff that they may abuse or may not even need. And I also comment it's really easy to add permissions. You check a box, but to remove them, you know, you can kind of make someone angry. You know, why did you take this away? Why don't you trust me? You know, things like that. Why go through the headache of all the drama over removing a permission when you can just start them off low when they don't really know what they should or should not have. And then if they run into a roadblock, you can sit with them and say, oh, you need to be able to restart vApps? No problem. Let me go ahead and add that for you. And they're going to think you're the hero because you help them out. So go into roles and permissions with that in mind, and it'll help kind of guard your back against issues where you have to remove later. That's not very fun. Now let's talk about LDAP integration. You'll pretty much always want to configure LDAP at the system level first, and that's for the, the system environment within vCloud Director. Uh, to do that, I like to make an LDAP account that just basically can read LDAP, and it has no permissions really within the domain, can't log in anywhere. Uh, usually I just call the account LDAP read or LDAP and you'll test to make sure that that works and you'll use that to map the desired users and groups to the systems administrator role. So let's go into the lab and I will show you how to set up LDAP integration with my lab environment so that you can kind of get the gist of how that works. Okay, so I've logged into the vCloud Director uh, system. As an administrator, I have full systems administrator power and we'll click on administration. 
and I'll go down to this little LDAP with the gears on it, click on that. Now I've already configured it, um, but we'll go over what I configured. And it's very, very straightforward. So ignore the buttons for now. We'll go down the connection and I'm gonna scroll it just to make it easier so you can see it, there we go. So first you want the server name of your domain controller, which has uh, Active Directory domain services installed upon it. Uh, I only have one, so it makes it easier for me. Mine is DC uh, for domain controller dot glacier dot local. The default port of 389 should be good unless you're using LDAP secure, which it tells you right here 636 is typical for LDAP S for the secure. Uh, but I'm not using that. The base distinguished name is basically you take the domain name of glacier dot local and each word separated by the period or multiple periods would be DC equals that. So DC equals glacier comma DC equals local. That's how that works. Uh, I'm not using any SSL, but if I was for LDAPs, we'd put in the SSL. We'd have, a, have to browse to where the certificate is and the key store, browse it and add it and put it in there. If you were doing authentication beyond simple like Kerberos, you would change it here and then you'd tie in your Kerberos information. We don't need any of that for Active Directory or at least the way I've got it set up, so simple should be fine. And just to uh, make it easy on myself, I just logged in using myself as the username, uh, but you would wanna put that LDAP read account in here. So it'd be some very generic, almost no permissions kind of account that when vCloud Director goes to read your LDAP to figure out the names of users and things like that and authenticates against it, it can use this account to do that. Uh, so once you've got that in, you don't have to touch any of the stuff down here if you're using Active Directory by default. This is all filled in and it's all valid. You shouldn't have to change anything unless your administrator has changed your schema in some way and has some other value for these. The defaults should be just fine. So to validate all this at the top, you go to Test LDAP Settings. You should see Connected and you should see information in here, such as basically uh, account name, is administrator, blah, blah, blah. You know, it all maps to information. So I can search for my, my account, which is just Chris, and we can see my name's Chris, my display name's Chris Wall, yada, yada. It just tells me kind of information about the account, and it should, uh, I don't have an email address or telephone number defined for my account. That's why it comes back with an error. And you may have some stuff not defined. You may not have uh, other information in here. It may not be relevant. Um, hopefully you are giving first, last name, and display name to your users, but... Uh, that's basically how that works. You should see some check boxes. If it's goofed up for some reason, let's say I put in a bad password here. So I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete the password. Just put something that's obviously wrong and go back up to test. It would say it couldn't connect. So it's pretty straightforward if it couldn't get in there. Additionally, if you blank out the username and password, it tries to do an anonymous read. And so if I blank that out and test the settings, it will connect. But in my case, I get an error saying that it couldn't bind to LDAP. Basically, it could connect to the server, but it couldn't get the authentication necessary to read the LDAP. So it doesn't really know who's in the directory. So if you see that, you can go ahead and, and know that you can't do anonymous reads. You'll need to put an actual account in here. So I'm, I'm going to revert my changes because I don't want any of these you know, goofiness that I put in here to happen, uh, which basically just refills in the information for me. And I'll test to make sure it's all good. Looks good. I can test for my Chris account one more time. And there we go. I know that it's now working for my system. So let's go back into the lesson and we'll continue right along. Okay, so for LDAP integration at the organization level, you have three choices. First is no LDAP, which is all local accounts. And that's kind of a, not a very common way to do it, unless you had a very specific use case. I, I really can't think of a good time you'd want to do that. Maybe if you didn't have any Active Directory accounts set up for that organization, or it was a very niche kind of organization set up for a small number of users or a special, you know, you, you sold your cloud services to someone else and they just need three accounts made. They don't want any LDAP integration for security, something like that. You might do L, no LDAP. For an internal private cloud, I pretty much never see this, so I think it would be kind of an edge use case. System LDAP is where the organization is going to piggyback on top of your system's LDAP. So that LDAP that I just set up previously would be used by the organization. And they'll be defined by the OU that you specify or the organizational unit that you specify. 
The final one is custom LDAP, which basically gives that organization the ability to use a third-party LDAP connection to their own LDAP server. And that would be pretty common if you had some other company consuming your vCloud. As an other consideration, I will cover, first off, the system and organization password policies. And it, I really hate the name password policy because it sounds like it's asking, asking you to set up complexity and, and length and duration and expirations of passwords. That's what I think of when I think of a password policy. And probably you do as well if you've ever worked with Windows password policies. You know, make it complex and make it at least 13 characters. You need seven exclamation marks and the word unicorn in there or something, whatever. Um, however, in the world of vCloud, a password policy is basically just saying, when should I lock out accounts and for how long? It's disabled by default. And an example would be after five failed attempts to log in, lock that person's account for 10 minutes. An admin can go back in and unlock it or reset the password, but it's just a way to keep someone or some program from trying to hammer its way and brute force its way into your system by guessing passwords. Another consideration around basically securing your vCloud environment is setting up an activity log, and this tracks the history of what's going on within vCloud. I definitely recommend turning that on and, and configuring that. We'll go over that in the lab. Uh, additionally, if you have a syslog server, that's a great idea uh, because all of your edge devices will send syslog information to that server. So it's a great way to capture that information in a central repository. An example would be if you had SolarWinds or Splunk or something like that to just really absorb that information and have it somewhere where you can search it later. The final consideration is around email alerts. And these are system notifications if there's a problem or an issue or an alert, it'll go ahead and send out an email. You can set that for the system level and the organizational level, depending on what alert or issue it is. I advise don't leave it set to the default destination of all system admins. Go ahead and set up a distribution list or a special email for a group of people so that if one of these alerts happen, uh, someone can be notified. A lot of times if you're a larger organization, you'll have a network operations center or a NOC as it's sometimes called, or a ticket system that you could dump an alert into. It'll make sure that it gets routed and handled. And you know, if you're the admin, it does it means that you don't have to kind of watch your email all night. You can have someone else help keep an eyeball on this and maybe a backup admin that can uh, you know fix the problem especially if you want to go on vacation or something. You don't want to be the guy that gets emails because you're the system admin. You want to make sure someone else can also go in there and, and address and resolve the issue. So let's go back into the lab and I'll go over some of these considerations in one of the organizations that was built in a previous lesson. Okay, so I'm back in the vCloud director as the system administrator or administrator account and I've just selected the manage and monitor section and the organizations. So here's the two organizations that were built previously, one for developers and one for public catalog. Let's go into the developers. And to do that, I just highlight it, and then it becomes a link that I can click, and a new tab will form. And because you're the systems administrator, you have full power and authority over the developer's organization. So if I click administration, we can look at their LDAP and see how it was configured. Now, right now, it's just set up that pretty much anyone within the domain that I have, the glacier.local or glacier local uh, distinguished name can get in here. So, or, or at least can be added to the cloud. So what I can do is because I've got it set so broadly, I can go into the groups and using this, it looks like a kind of a notebook with a person on it and an arrow. If I hover, it says import groups. We can import really any group we want out of LDAP. And in a previous lesson, I went ahead and grabbed domain users and gave everyone in the domain console access only by an LDAP. So I should be able to log in with my LDAP account, my Active Directory account for the developers organization and get at least console access to the cloud. Additionally, I do have some users set up. I got my own user account. Uh, I've logged in previously, so I show up here, and the JoeBob vApp author. So let's log in as JoeBob, and then we'll log in as me and kind of see some of the differences of what it looks like when you're a vApp author role as opposed to a console access role. So I'm going to log out. Uh, first, actually, what I'm going to do is go to the general tab. and I'm going to grab this URL because this is actually where I want to log in to test this. So I'm going to highlight that, copy it, 
right click copy, I'm going to log out, and then I'm going to paste this new URL that you would actually give to your consumers of this uh, developer's organization and log in here. Now there's nothing really different looking other than the fact that the URL is for the cloud org developers URL. So I'm going to first log in as Joe Bob and it's a local account so I don't need any kind of domain or anything and we'll use Joe Bob's password to log in. So here's Joe Bob and it's letting me know that's a VApp author and I'm in the development users organization because even though the organization is called developers we give it a more friendly name of development users. Now you can see there's no vapps here so as a vapp author it really doesn't have any you know there's really no choices here I can go in here and look and there's just no vapps to choose from so his role is kind of worthless right now because there's no vapps uh, in the future however he'd be able to go to the catalogs find a vapp uh, and potentially grab it and, and author a new vapp based on the catalog templates but as you can see here there's just nothing right now so let's get out of that and you can see it's got my cloud you can see what vapps and vms this person has has got powered on and running and deployed which pretty much nothing right now uh, the home tab and the catalogs so let's log out again and we will try to log in as my LDAP account uh, let me try it with let me try it that way first with the glacier domain slash name okay that didn't work I don't want it to remember that I'll try it just the name yep there we go so because there's only one choice for it we don't need to specify a domain uh, for the user and sometimes I get that backwards but I all I need to do is type in my user account name in LDAP and it went ahead and, and got me into the system now as you can see as a console access only user I really have almost nothing I can do in here I don't have any catalog access when I go to my cloud Again, it's empty, but even if I sell anything here, the only thing I could do is actually get into the console as shown right here. So this is a very limited account. As you build out new roles and give it new permissions, I definitely recommend go ahead and set a test user, such as like the Joe Bob account, some local account, as that role, and then log in and make sure you can do what you need to do. It's very important that you play around with the account or specifically with the role before you hand it off to someone else to make sure that you're not having to do double or triple work and also to make sure they can't get to something sensitive you may have accidentally clicked a checkbox or not really fully understood what the checkbox was going to do and you log in and you can see they have the ability to nuke the whole cloud or something you know crazy and you're like whoa <laughs> that's not what I wanted so a little due diligence logging in first making sure everything looks good and really validate that that role or the new role that you built is what you wanted is very important so that pretty much covers everything about uh, securing roles and groups and user access, specifically around LDAP to the system and organization. I hope you enjoy this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.